today we're going to look at a method of numerical differentiation known as the five-point stencil. So if you're working in applied mathematics, often you have a bunch of data, but you don't have like an analytic version of a function that you might be working with. So you need to find some sort of way to take derivatives of functions described by this data without actually taking the derivative. And you might do that with numerical differentiation. Okay, so here's the idea behind the five-point stencil and really the idea behind, you know, a lot of different techniques of numerical differentiation. So we'd like to numerically approximate f prime by taking a weighted average of slopes of certain secant lines. And which secant lines we choose give rise to different strategies for numerically differentiating. Okay, so in our case, in this case of the five-point stencil, what we'll do is take the secant line between x minus 2h and x plus 2h. So there's a little bit of a typo, x plus 2h. So that's this blue line. So notice here we have x minus h, x minus 2h, and x plus 2h. And then we'll take the secant from x minus h to x plus h, so that would be this orange line. And our goal is to find a weighted average of the slope of the blue line and the orange line to very closely approximate the slope of the actual tangent, which is this magenta line. Let's get into the derivation of this rule. So we're going to start with the Taylor expansion of a function f near a point x. But since it's near a point x, we're going to use a variable of t just to like keep everything like a little bit less confusing. So here we have when t is close to x, well, it's got to be within the radius of convergence, which we won't really worry about here because we'll be expanding very, very close to x. Okay, so when t is close to x, we have f of t looks like the sum, as n goes from 0 up to infinity, of the nth derivative of f evaluated at x divided by n factorial and then t minus x to the n. Okay, great. But since we want to work with things like f of x plus h and f of x minus h and so on and so forth, I think it's probably not a terrible idea to look at a special case of this when t equals x plus h. And then we'll specialize to some other values of t as well, like on the fly. Okay. So that's going to give us f of x plus h is equal to the sum. We still have n going from 0 to infinity, the nth derivative evaluated at x over n factorial. And then x plus h minus x will be just h to the n power. So we have something like that. And then we'll get similar things for f of x minus h, f of x plus 2h, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's expand some of these out and see where we're really going here. So we've got f of x plus h will be equal to f of x plus f prime of x times h. So that would be the n equals one term. And then plus one half f double prime of x times h squared plus one over six. That's one over three factorial f triple prime of x over or times h cubed. And then I'll write one more, 1 over 24 f quadruple prime of x times h to the fourth plus, and I'm just going to sneak this in here, h to the fifth times some other stuff. Everything left over we can factor an h to the fifth out of. Okay, so there's our f of x plus h, but let's recall that we wanted to find the slope of the secant between f of x plus h and f of x minus h. So that means we also need an expression for f of x minus h. But that's actually not too hard to grab just from this similar expansion up here. Notice if we had x minus h inside of here, we would have exactly the same thing except for minus h to the n, which means we would get an alternating series. 
So whenever we have an odd power of h, we'll pick up a minus, and whenever we have an even power of h, it will stay a plus. So that's gonna leave us with f of x minus f prime of x times h plus a half f double prime of x times h squared minus a sixth, we have f triple prime of x times h cubed minus, or sorry, that should be plus one over 24, f quadruple prime of x times h to the fourth, and then plus another term that involves h to the fifth. It's not the same type of term, but it's another term with which we can factor an h to the fifth out of the whole thing. Okay. But now let's notice that these alternating signs give us some motivation to either take the sum of these and have those cancel or the difference. Since we're trying to numerically approximate f prime, we'll want to take the difference because we'll want to hold on to f prime. If we were trying to numerically approximate something like maybe f double prime, we would take the sum because then that would clear out the f prime terms, but it would leave us with the f double prime terms. Okay, so anyway, let's take the difference. We have f of x plus h minus f of x minus h. Okay, so what cancels here? Well, this f of x and this f of x cancel. This f prime of x and the other f prime of x will double up, giving us two f prime of x times h. The f double primes will cancel because we're taking the difference. These will double up to give us one third f triple prime of x times h cubed. The f quadruple prime things cancel. And then finally we'll be left with h to the fifth times some stuff. Remember, we're thinking about h being very, very small. So this is a negligible component of this whole thing. Okay, so now we have something like this. Okay, now from here we're going to play the same game with f of x plus 2h and f of x minus 2h. So let's do that. We'll have f of x plus 2h. So how will that expand? Well, let's notice if we had f of x plus 2h here, we would have a 2 to the n, h to the n up here. That's how that would change. Okay, so let's write that out. We'll have f of x, and then it'll be plus 2 times f prime of x times h. And then let's see, that'll be plus another 2 times f double prime of x times h squared. That's because we have 2 squared over 2, so that'll cancel out. And then we'll have 2 cubed over 6, so that's going to be 8 over 6, which is the same thing as 4 over 3. So plus 4 over 3 f triple prime of x times h cubed. And then we'll have 16 over 24, so let's see, that simplifies to 4 over 6 or 2 over 3, so that'll be plus... 2 over 3f quadruple prime of x times h to the fourth plus our h to the fifth term. But now if we take f of x minus 2h, we'll get essentially the same thing, but now it will be an alternating sum. So we'll have f of x and then minus 2f prime of x times h and then plus that will be 2f double prime of x times h squared minus 4 thirds, f triple prime of x times h cubed, and then plus 2 thirds, f quadruple prime of x times h to the fourth, and then plus our h to the fifth term. Great. And now that motivates us to, again, take another difference to cancel out maybe some of the terms except for the f prime term. So let's do that and see what we get. So this is going to leave us with f of x plus 2h minus f of x minus 2h will give us... So this term will cancel, the f of x term, and then these will double up to give us 4 times f prime of x times h. The f double primes will cancel. These will double up to give us plus 8 over 3 
f triple prime of x times h cubed, the fourth derivative terms will cancel, and then we'll have h to the fifth times something left over. Okay, so let's maybe put a little bit of a box around that, and this green box thing and this blue box thing are the important parts to move on. So notice they are expansions that involve f prime, f triple prime, and then an h to the fifth and higher terms. Okay, so let's bring those to the top and then we'll move on. So these are the two formulas that we ended on the last board. It's the difference of f of x plus h and f of x minus h, and then f of x plus 2h and f of x minus 2h. And notice both of them are expanded in terms of odd derivatives. And our goal is to approximate the first derivative. So now the idea is to take a linear combination of these things so that the third derivative cancels. And we don't worry about the fifth or higher derivatives because we're considering h to be small, which means this contribution over here is negligible. And we'll note that a little bit more later. Okay, so how can we get rid of this? Well, notice that here we have an eight over three f triple prime and a one over three f triple prime. So that motivates us to maybe take this first line and multiply it by eight and subtract the second line. So let's do that. So we have eight times f of x plus h minus f of x minus h minus f of x plus two h minus f of x minus 2h will equal what? So we're multiplying this by eight and then subtracting it from the lower term. So two times eight is 16, minus four is 12. That gives us 12 times f prime of x times h. And then by design, the f triple prime terms cancel, leaving us with just h to the fifth and higher terms. So we have something like that. But now we can maybe solve for f prime and we'll have our formula, which is the approximation known as the five point stencil. So we're almost there. So I'll drop the h to the fifth and higher terms and make an approximate equality. And then we'll have, let's see, what will it be? So let's maybe put this in some sort of natural order. We'll have negative f of x plus 2h. And then let's descend to plus 8 f of x plus h. And then we'll descend further to minus 8 f of x minus h. And then we'll end with plus f of x plus 2h. And then this is all over 12 times h. So that's our approximation. But by like standard rules involving limits, especially since this is h to the fifth, we'll see that f prime is actually exactly equal to the limit as h goes to zero of this object right here. So that gives us some sort of like crazy complicated limit definition of the derivative. Let's maybe finish this video off by calculating the derivative of a nicely defined function using this more complicated limit definition. So we just finished deriving the five point stencil approximation for the derivative, and that arrived us at this like crazy souped up limit definition of a derivative, which I have up here. So notice f prime should be equal to the limit as h goes to zero of this crazy combination of the numerator all over 12 times h. And I thought we'd finish with kind of a goofy example of using this new limit definition to calculate the derivative of a fairly simple function. So let's say that fairly simple function is the function f of x equals x squared. Okay, so let's get to it. So we have the limit as h goes to zero of minus x minus 2h squared. So let's multiply that out. That gives us x squared minus 4xh and then plus 4h squared. So I won't do these for all of these, but this is playing the role of minus x minus 2h quantity squared, this first term. And then after that, we'll have plus eight x squared plus two x h plus h squared. And then minus eight x squared minus two x h 
plus h squared, and then finally plus x squared plus 4xh plus 4h squared, when all is said and done, and that's all over 12h, like we had discussed before. Okay, so now let's notice some things cancel. So this minus x squared right here will cancel this x squared over here. And then this 8x squared will cancel this minus 8x squared. Okay, and then some things will also like build up. So let's see what builds up. So we have a negative negative 4xh. So that in the end gives us 4xh. And then to that we add 8xh. So that gives us 12xh. We add another 8xh from this and another 4xh from that. So that gives us 24hx in the end, or 24xh, 24xh. So that's from all of those xh terms. Then what do we have for the h squared terms? Well, here we have negative 4h squared and then a positive 4h squared over there. So these actually cancel. So this one and let's see, this one over here cancel. And then likewise, this 8h squared and this negative 8h squared also cancel. So the h squared terms cancel. So if we put this all over 12h, we see that even without the limit, this simplifies to 2h, 2x, which is obviously the derivative of x squared. So this is one of those cases where because we're looking at this higher level limit definition or approximation of the derivative, we get exact derivatives without taking the limit for maybe more complicated polynomials. So maybe I'll leave you with a question and that's what's the highest degree polynomial that this expression will calculate the derivative of without having to take the limit, just like we saw here with a quadratic polynomial. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.